Okay. Another one. Hey, Atsuki. Man, you're... You are ready. Some crazy winds outside today. Everything is blowing in different directions and everything is swaying and... Madness. Doesn't look like you want to go outside. So I'm trying a new setup with the microphone. Uh, so it doesn't catch. Uh, hopefully it'll sound better, clearer, and more uh, balanced noise, I guess. Hey Amir, Sharsa, Pakobra, how's it going? And uh, if you have any topic suggestions, throw them my way. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey, Rollo Manser. I liked your um, your sketch yesterday. Battle man. Crispy Bjorn voice, so the sound is better. Hmm. Hmm. Mother witch. Remarkably lame. <laughs> if you're going to bed now, which that means it's 4 a.m. for you, approximately. Three, maybe. Hey, Spectre. Gria. How's it going? So, if you have any topic suggestions, uh, please let me know. Only 1 a.m.? All right. All right. That's not too bad. <laughs> hey, Zeli. Give me a... We got... Mother Witch. And we got Lightning Mermaid. Lightning Maid? Fantastic. I never drawn a Lightning Maid. Mer, obviously, it doesn't work. That's God of Dreams. That's pretty cool. Toad Troll. I want to draw a Toad Troll. God damn, that's pretty cool. One, two, three, four. Five. All right, we got five at minimum. Uh, so let's see. And okay, let's uh, throw the dice. Two, which was a lightning made. All right. Thank you for um, making me draw uh, something I've never drawn before. I have literally never drawn a lightning maid. I have one picture in my mind. I'm trying to like, like a little bit of a cog, like turn the idea, tick, 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 in my mind. To, to try to make it work of like what direction I am to take it. But okay. Yeah, rare day of drawing something new for sure. I've literally never drawn a lightning maid. This will be fascinating. Exciting, actually. So the idea... Oh, what I had in my mind. Hey, Miguel, how's it going? Was uh, like a cocky pose, right? Someone is like, come at me, come at me, dude. And then... And then because it's lightning, you've got to have a body, right? But then the body needs to be elemental. Oh, okay. Elemental beast. Oh. Okay, I get it. You want, you want help. 
I just got it. You guys are cheating. And I was, and I, <laughs> I get it. Okay, okay. No, it's okay. I'll do it. <laughs> So I think that the the trick here, the hardest part, um, what it's going to be, is to make it come across as a mermaid. Um, and not just an el elemental thing. Sharsa, <laughs> it might have become something for the uh, Unreal Bjornament topic, yeah. But it's okay, I mean, you could easily say, oh, you can just look at an old, um, old episode. So it's, it's okay. It's not literal, it's... It is not a, not that bad. Sure, sir. I think it's fine. It's absolutely fine. I, or rather, I know it's fine. Don't worry about it. So, like I said, the trick here is going to be the having enough visual communication that will inform the play uh, viewer hey Krasker um, visual information that uh, sets it apart from um, visual uh, um, elemental creature beast <laughs> elemental beast um and make it in water right i guess that's um right that that's has to be the uh what's it called mermaid if it's a lightning maid could it? Would you allow it? Uh, who did say? Who said the topic? Um, who said lightning maybe? Sharsa? Yeah. Um, would you allow it to be out of water? Would it? It wouldn't be a maid then, right? Spectre. I wouldn't say that uh, Warhammer have coined lightning theme. <laughs> she could live in the clouds, clouds are water. But would you go mer mermaid or lightning maid then? I mean, wouldn't it be more natural that it the, the the lightning maid would be in water but it wouldn't be a physical entity but more of a elemental entity <laughs> milkmaid <laughs> so it would would the classification of a lightning maid be the separation of um, they wouldn't separate it from its uh, location, but its behavior. Zelen, <laughs> just, just uh, lightning pack, lightning mermaid pancakes on a clear day. <laughs> you you wake up, you walk out of your hut, and there's some some splatter outside and you're like oh another good day it's a good day today no rain clubs it's 
Seelen. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay, so w what I had in mind in terms of like how to make it work uh, is that they're going to be have to be fish still, right? Um, but with electrical elements to it. You could have gone uh, el like electrical eel, right? That would probably be the... Uh, if you would do a poll and, and everyone would do um, do an uh, lightning maid, I think most people would do an electrical eel as a solution. And then another big portion of people would probably do elemental, as in just a lightning-shaped uh, mermaid. <laughs> I think that would be a hilarious uh, image, but you would understand. You would understand. Need to understand the backstory to, to really grasp. You know what's happening in the picture. But that that like the, on the back on the topic on on who would draw what in terms of solution that that is a really interesting uh, thing i think you've got to think about when you're doing uh, when you're searching for visual solutions and when you're designing something is that you really got to consider uh, like what is the trope right what is the go-to idea on the topic that you're designing Hey, Fuxia. So, for example, if I wouldn't have given my lightning maid uh, a fish body or suggestion of one, um, you could have easily interpreted it as a as a something else, just like an elemental. And uh, at the moment, the lightning maid is void of um, environment. Like, uh, she's not in water, so it can she can exist anywhere at the moment. So it, it's those kind of things, like when you're designing, uh, almost. It's you gotta almost think of like um, a chart, where mu much like the shapes you're designing, like which shape is primary, which shape is secondary, you also gotta consider like what what narrative am I gonna use? Which is the primary narrative? Which is the secondary narrative? Uh, all these things, you know, like how to convey the idea. The Maya principle, Rollermaster, most advanced yet acceptable. That would be interesting to hear what that actually means. But yeah, so the whole idea of like what's the narrative tools you're going to use to convey the idea where are you going to put the effort in because a lot of times when you're designing uh, if you're not a very good designer you tend to over convolute the idea you tend to put one too many things in there in terms of of communicating
Like, what what things do you put in and put your effort in to communicate? Like I said, like on, on mine here, I've gone, I'd say almost 50-50 in terms of fish versus lightning. And I put the effort in in the upper part of the body. But I've kept fish elements in there, like physical body. And uh, you could you can shift this around. You can play around with the idea. You know, like I said, some people most likely will have an electrical eel that generates electricity. Uh, some people will have it as an elemental. And then within those categories, you could play around with a lot of things of, you know, let's say an, an electrical eel direction. How would you go about showcasing that? You know, what does the body look like? Is she black? Magical? You know, there's so many different routes to take. And it's, um, and that's a kind of like a, uh, what's it called? Minefield that you got to navigate as a designer. And then after that, it comes down to execution, the subtleties of shape the curvature of elements and you know more there's more steps than one in order for you to be able to design something that's relatable understandable and especially something for example that i've never drawn before uh, you got to consider like am i communicate communicating the idea correctly how can i up the narrative so that when you see this you understand what I'm going for um, you know is the topic explained in the correct manner am I missing the ball you know did I choose the right path to take in terms of narrative recipe of where to put the effort in Amir, the glow is nice. Well, the idea is, I, is that um, it's an elemental, halfway elemental. So, it has to be electrical. And I'm Again, like I'm in, in, I'm going through the the checklist in my mind of what what elements I want to include in order to to visually communicate water mermaid but electrical. So I'm currently um, one of those checklist elements is the element of electricity but underwater, right? So I'm trying to to communicate the water aspect at the moment, an element as in uh, electricity. So I chose that that is one of the pillars of the concept rather than the action of electricity, like a uh, electrical eel. Currently. Whew. Fuxia and, and Gria. Yeah. The hard part with all of, of these things in, in terms of uh, creating a, a entry to a competition based on a topic is, is, is this idea of making it... Uh, 
making it a wa uh, valid idea to pursue. And a lot of times, um, people might want to overcomplicate things. Like I said before, a lot of designers, they tend to put one too many things in their concept so that the concept becomes convoluted, the shapes might become convoluted, the, it's just too crowded. So one, one good thing, one good lesson that you could do is like what I've talked about today is that if you have a basic idea, let's say, let's, because the topic is ele uh, elemental beast on round three, right? So let's take electricity in this example as a, as a discussion point. Um, like I said, you could go the same idea in multiple different routes and you could get multiple different outcomes. And I could draw the same lightning mermaid again with the same narrative uh, points in mind. I won't change that she is supposed to be an electrical mermaid, right? Um, but I, every, if I would redraw it, I wouldn't redraw it the same way. Maybe I would change the pose. Maybe I would change the way the electricity is. Maybe I would, you know, all these different things, right? I, I would most likely do differently. Um, and it will dramatically change the, the read of the idea. So if you are struggling, you should start thinking about what you want to paint in terms of, oh, I'd like to paint a fire or electricity sounds fun. And then you can start narrowing it down as in like, okay, so what do I want to say with electricity in this instance, right? So oh, I want to show the coiled potential power, let's say that, you know, like maybe there's, she's kind of just starting to sparkle or, or a current running uh, on the surface of the skin of the electrical mermaid, or maybe at full blast. So if it's the full blast, how do I communicate the full power of it, right? And then you could start doing thumbnails and, or you can explore it and then you could go, oh no, it didn't, I didn't uh, strike gold with my thoughts, right? So then you could go, okay, how about if I show that killing something with electricity? How can I show that? And then you, as long as you start to kind of decipher what you want to communicate and, and put the hierarchy down, like, okay, I want the, this action or the, the aspect of the entity itself to take the first place, you know, first room. And then you can go, oh, all right, so when you start quantifying what you actually have to do, then it becomes a lot more tangible. Because even, even though you've defined it significantly, the, the fact of, of art itself is that there's indefinite possibilities, <laughs> even within one singular topic, which is highly defined, right? you're still going to be able to do bazillion different sketches, bazillion different angles, values, shapes, colors. Zeal it. I mean, four of the elements, right, are wind, earth, uh, fire, water. But I mean, you could you could stretch the the idea to well, ground, 
grounding element electricity or water you know. like main elements and sub elements well, yeah, it's, it's all just about managing uh, your thoughts and, and approach and making sure that uh, whatever you're doing, that um, not so much you have it under control, but you are compartmentalizing your, your thought process so that you're not all over the place. I mean, some people uh, thrive in, in randomness, right? Like they, they want or they rely on happy accidents. And that's nothing wrong. Uh, that's a va absolutely valid approach as well. But as long as you are aware of it, I think that's the, the key thing here, right? Is, is being aware of yourself and how you create things, which, which could be the, the absolute difference. Uh, The, that would that would uh, generate a great picture or a or a generic picture, right? If if you know, like, oh, if I sketch out my ideas too early, my my uh, images turn to generic bullshit. So then you know that maybe all right, okay, I can't I can't sketch out my ideas too much. Like I will overwork them, so I like okay. I know that I need to to rely on happy accidents more. So you just spend time sketching and just see you know visual exploration. There is there's nothing wrong with that either. There's a a well known artist Andrew Jones. Uh, he was a concept artist for many years at Massive Black. Uh, he was he was working on the Metroid uh, Prime series as a concept artist, and he has lent his skills to a lot of games and concepts. But he started this kind of art style, which isn't really his, but uh, he has made it really, really his own. I would say. So during a long time, he 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 didn't call himself a concept artist. He called himself a shape sifter not shifter but sifting you know like uh, parsing in shapes so what he would do he would create things and 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 react to the shapes being created and he would kind of snowball and he would create patterns out of patterns and then you know repeat them and, and create these uh, fascinating images I can I can show you just so you so you understand um, what I'm talking about um, so we're on the this is a YouTube link but obviously it's the headline his image is is there right so you can see how he uh, he kind of is exploring patterns and shapes and and very reactive in the way he's, he's manufacturing these images, but these are all based on his input, right? And how he creates these uh, uh, patterns, and then he, he reacts to it and, and, and like takes it from there. And he couldn't never, he would never be able to sit and sketch that out beforehand. The image itself would be too controlled and too convoluted to get to where he wants it, want, wants it to be, right? So he's actively using the brain's capacity to, to pattern recognize things. So he's, he's creating patterns and then he sees something and then he creates it. And, and he absolutely relies on ha happy accidents to create that art where he can't do that the opposite, you know, like thumbnailing it out 
calculating the approach, right? So this both works really, really well. And it's just a matter of understanding yourself. Like, again, we're coming back to the topic of uh, process that I talked about last week, I think, it's the, or two weeks ago. You have to understand your own process. You have to start, like, that's why I asked you as a kind of like a homework a long time ago to think about your steps. It is important to, to understand the way you tend to work. The, the way you tend to do things where the result is is where you are really enjoying the look of it or the feel of it and, and if you don't know how you got there you can't replicate it and uh, if you can't replicate it you can't enhance it and uh, every time if you every time you change approach um, uh, outside of your comfort zone you have to relearn approach uh, and if you if you redo the same approach, but you slightly alter it, you're refining the approach, right? And if you don't even change it at all, you're just doing another image and based on the same approach, you're also refining your, enhancing your ability to use this approach. <laughs> Pro graphics. Thank you for the offer. No. Uh, Zialin, it's not really like uh, gun breeding, but the principle is the same. Fuchsia, no, oh, no problem. So the idea there, right, is the is that there isn't really any right or wrong. There isn't really a right or wrong. That's happening up there. Uh, it's just, there is more of a right or wrong for you. And at the beginning, it's hard to know uh, what process you're using or where you're comfortable with. Uh, but, but I would always say it's really important that you start thinking about it. And it's really important that you start wondering about process. And that's why there's also a huge importance in trying out the basics, trying out the, the, like the pillars of, of uh, media, you know, like graphite, oil, uh, uh, watercolors, blah blah blah, and it's the same applies to digital. If you if you don't go on traditional media, there is certain ways of doing things. You should explore them. You should practice them. You should see what sticks. And if something sticks, there is something like complex layer system of. Uh, things that you enjoy or sim things that you've exposed to that you enjoy and if it if something speaks to you you should probably uh, listen to that and start exploring that further where traditional media whenever I paint with watercolors I absolutely hate it right but uh, put me in front of oil paint and I'm happy right? there's some there's some um, like structural things, pigmentation things, there's canvas, there's different kind of multiple things that, that I enjoy because I paint a lot more like a sculptor sculpts. So with watercolors, I can't act that way. Oh, well, I could with gouache and so on, but... But at the beginning, I kind of felt like, oh, this doesn't really speak to me, so I, I'm not going to touch watercolors. Whereas some, uh, some other person is the polar opposite and they say, oh, watercolors is absolutely my, my jam. And both are right.
So that's that's the whole point of it. it's trying to figure out the process. Try to figure out what you like doing, and as the more you can compartmentalize it, the more you can understand you, and and the more you can enhance those steps, and the more you can explore those steps. You know, like sculpting for me digitally is easy compared to let's say watercolors in either media, digital or traditional. You know. Just because that's, I know this because it's very close to my thinking and I have a very strong three-dimensional thinking. I can come up with this thing and I know what it would look like from the bottom, from the top, from the back, just by rotating the image in my mind. And, and, and I know that my, my brain has a strong three-dimensional thinking, which means that any... Um, process that's required structure I can deal with a lot easier than the other way around because because of the, how my brain is geared and how I have practiced that kind of thinking right and not everyone is the same and I can't tell everyone to do the same process either is is that you have to start looking at yourself more to understand where you are happy where you are natural and then enhance that and practice it. Anyways, strange rant over. <laughs> um, who can we rate? Hmm. We're going to raid someone with a really hard, long nickname. Is this even? Nope. Okay, hopefully this is correctly spelled or we're gonna raid someone else. Okay, it's the right. <laughs> Thanks for uh, having me draw something I've never drawn before, Shasta. Have a great day, everyone. Uh, good night. Uh, we're going to raid Studio Colorophobia. He does a lot of Warhammer stuff. Uh, I'm going to do the outro, then take you there. So don't go anywhere. Have a good one. See you tomorrow. Toodles.